I just thought for our class demonstration, we'll just do all these at two places. Now, some of you might write that as 2%, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you may prefer to write it that way. I'll write all these in decimal form. All right. So when 2%, ages 15 and 19, had multiple births. All right. How about this one? 0 0.072. I'll make that 0.07. Uh, 0 0.25. Oh, I got another one that's in the middle. See the 5, everyone? So I'll just go to 0 0.03. Again, though, 2.5%. I could round that to 2 or 3%. I'm going to round up to 3%. And now, each time I do this, we're taking that number, dividing that number. That number, divide that number. All right, what's the next one? Should that be like 30%? No, yeah, it should be 0.25. Oh, thank you. This is 0.25. Yeah. You all know the past. So I'm going to make that a point two. What was after the five? Two. Two, five, two. So I'll write that as point two, five. What do you get for the next one? Point three, five, one, one, three, five, two. All right. Next one. Point two four. Point oh five. Point oh five. What was after the O five? One. And lastly, another point oh two. Now, if I add all these up and they add up to more than 100%. I think I'll go back in and either this one or... What does this one do? 0 0.01 what? 0.0163. You know, maybe this one I'll tweak down to 1% if it doesn't add up to 100%. All right, that's seven, that's nine, plus 25, 34, 69, 89, 98, 100, I think we got 100%, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sum up to 1.0, all right, we're good. I'm going to put my small piece. We're good to go. And there's my presentation. I'm going to put that in my presentation. Just to give rough estimates of what each of these percentages are. 2% of the multiple births for ages 15 and 19. This is interesting. So on women, 40 to 44%, 5%. That's pretty high for women. 40. What do you think is going on there? Anybody know? I know there's nurses in this room. In vitro. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Very good. Very good. So, these are more births. This is called the probability model. So we're saying, yeah, roughly 35% of those multiple births ages 30 to 34. Cool. Hey, we're now going to get into the probability rules. And in 5.2, They start talking about the addition rule. All right. Well, before I write the addition rule down, we're going to start with an example. Can I raise? Yeah? So, Professor, you're not doing the law of large number, like where it converges to half and all this? No, but we'll discuss it. Okay. We'll definitely discuss that. That's going to come up in our discussion. So, all right, very good. Anyone? Art just mentioned the law of large numbers, which is an interesting law. What page did they present that on? First page. Uh, let me see. 255. So on page 255, and when they do have something called the law of large numbers, I'd like to read this to you. But this will come up through our class today, next class, through our discussions. And he says, the number of repetitions of a probability experience increases. The proportion with which a certain outcome is observed gets closer to the probability of the outcome. <laughs> what does all that mean? And when roughly about, I'm a lefty, I'm a lefty, but I think about like 13%, about 13% of the population is lefty, right? But if you just got like a small sample, you might have like a bunch of lefties in that little small sample. Okay, so I'm talking about like 25 people. You go, hey, how many people's a lefty? You might get more than that, what, 12%? But if you looked at like 
500 people all at once, random people, and you try to figure out what, all right, and you ask the whole group of people, hey, I have an announcement. Who in here is left-handed? And those people raise their hand, they count them up. With 500 people, that percentage would be very close to what that, you know, actual proportion is, which is roughly about 12%. Cool? Hey, I'm just curious right now, because I'm a lefty. So I'm going to include myself in this bunch. Who's a lefty? All right, we're going to count them up. Me, one, two, three, four. Yeah, lefties rule. All right, we got four. Now I'm going to count up how many we got here. I'll be real quick. Myself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-four, fifty, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. All right. What's that on the top letter? One over seven. What's one over seven? Two over seven. 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 Two over
Pulled a couple up. Oh, there's a red card, seven of diamonds. Oh, three of clubs, black card. So that's what I'm talking about. They do have colors. So if we start talking about, well, what's the chances it's a red card? Let's say no. All right, so my first question that I'm going to ask someone. I've got a deck of cards. The cards are random. If you're curious, you need to shuffle cards to make them random. Yeah. A lot of you know how to shuffle. Uh, don't laugh, I'm terrible at shuffling cards. Stink at this. Uh, look at that. Pretend like I <laughs> yeah, I just shuffled them. But if you're curious, how many times should you shuffle the cards to make them totally random? The answer is seven. They actually did studies just to find out. To make them all truly random, make all these cards truly random, you should shuffle at least seven times. So. If you are a card player, next time you play cards, just know that. You know, sometimes people just shuffle once or twice, and they dish them back out. They're not really random. They're not really random. To get them truly random, you got to do it at least seven times. After seven times, it's meaningless. You know, it's needless. So just make sure you shuffle at least seven times. All right, so these have been shuffled. All right, the question is, I'm going to select one card. What's the probability I select? A seven from the deck. Oh, I can make a fraction, right? Mm -hmm. What's the two? denominator? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Very, very good. I want fifty-two for the denominator, right? Fifty-two possible outcomes. Now, watch me screw this up. You got to fix this because I get this on test. Look. Okay, seven out of fifty-two. Four. That's not right, is it? Four. Let me get that out of the way. How many sevens are there in Four. the deck? We got a seven of clubs, seven of spades, a seven of diamonds, and a seven of hearts. There are four sevens in the deck. So let me fix that. Four out of 52. That's a nice answer. Although a lot of you probably want to reduce that. So you can reduce 452 to be one over 13. 13. Um, so I'm going to take the squiggle. I'll round it two decimal places. What do you get on the calculator? 8.0. Oh, so, uh, uh, point zero seven six. Point zero seven six. So I could write that as point oh eight. Yeah. With the squiggle, my final answer, or eight percent. Eight percent. Cool. And I know we've talked about like approximate exact. These are exact. Like that's exact. But we're getting an estimation. Like hey, you got roughly an eight percent chance. So if you use any of those answers. Exactly. Okay. You know, if you do like a. My stat lab problem, they might go, well, oh, the three decimal places. Okay, we'll write the point zero seven six. But these are great. So I'm saying, if I really did this, I'm going to pull the card right now. What's the chances this is a seven? There's an 8% chance. That's not good, is it? It's probably not going to be a seven, is it? Did I win? No. I lost. What did I Jack oh, Jack I lost. So I only had an 8%, right? If they're truly random. All right, so now. My next one, let's probably select a five or a nine. Now, this is a new word. So let me circle it. Or. The two words you hear with probability, or and and. Or and and. Well, here comes this word or. When you hear this word or, Basically, everyone, I'm not making a rule up here, but this word or, when you hear it, you're basically adding probabilities. I mean, throughout all probability, when you hear this, what's the chances this or this occurs? What's the probability this or this occurs? I want you to think addition. I want you to think summation. I'll put the rules up eventually, but that's what we're thinking. Like in this case, I'm like, I'm going to have to add these two probabilities. All right? And then I'll put the rule up. I'll put the rule up, but I want us to do it without it first. We're thinking addition. So I guess that's the probability I'm getting a 5, plus the probability I'm getting a 9. A nine. Well, let's start here. 52 cards in the deck, that's my denominator. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Because I get that on top. No. Good. What's wrong with the 5? It should be 4. There's not 5 5 in the deck. That 5, I'm talking about the actual what? The five. Can I find one in here? Let's see if we can get a five out of this mess. <coughs> Take me three minutes just to find the five. There, well, there's a five. Five or hard. I'm talking about that. 
But there's only four of these in the deck, right? There's only four fives in the deck. So that's a four out of the two. Nope. There, that's good. Now, how many nines are in that? Same four out of the same. And we just add So my final answer, I'll just put a wall here so it doesn't interfere with this. I'll just put my final answer. Eight over 52. Eight over 52. I have an eight and 52 chance. My probability is eight out of 52. Reduce the fraction, what would that be? Four and two. Two thirteenths? Hey, anybody want to know how to reduce a fraction on a calculator? A lot of you know, but some might not know. If I hit 8 divided 52 on a calculator, and I hit M, right? Don't I get a long decimal? Mm -hmm. But what if I hit math 1? I hit math 1, which is called the frac button, and then I hit enter. What will it do? It will reduce the fraction. Now, when you want to try it, if you want to write reduce fractions, you know, you could, I know you all know how to reduce fractions, but if you're like, I'm going to let this tool do it. I get 8 divided 52, this long decimal pops up on my calculator, I hit math 1 frac enter, I frac it, <laughs> think of it as a verb, I'll frac it, it's going to reduce the fraction for you. Uh, what's that as a decimal? 0.15, thank you Gary. So that should be 0.2, no, it's 0.16. Oh, what was after the 5? Five? 5.3, five, 8. Oh, so I, yeah, I guess I'll round down to 15%. You could do it, if you wanted to round up, you surely could. Okay. You really could. You go, hey, 15 or 16%. I'll round up to 16%, like the 538. Mm -hmm. That number after the 5 is a 5 or higher. Yeah. But absolutely, you're like, well, I just wanted to round up. And you totally can. So when it'd be a 15% chance of getting a 5 or a 9, can I do it? Come on. Did I win? No. no. I lost. But it had to be a 5 or a 9. Well, it was neither. That one, this is the exact answer to this problem. I didn't even write the rule up. But I'm about to introduce the rule, but this is how you do the probability if your 